since we put our new solar system in, in the last couple of weeks, I have noticed that we're just not getting as much sun as we usually do. Matter of fact, the sun normally comes over the hill at about 11 o'clock in the morning, right up there. It's been that way for the last five years that we've owned the, the property. It's been that, that, that obvious to me anyway, because I watch it in the mornings, especially on these short days right now. We, we are uh, within about two weeks of the shortest, three weeks of the shortest day of the year. So when it gets down like this, because we're completely off grid, I watch the sun to see what time it comes over the hill. I'm also trying to, to decide where in fact we're gonna put the new solar panels. Okay, it's about 1230 right now. The sun came over the hill about half an hour ago, maybe. We have lost at least an hour, at least an hour of sun, and then it, it drops below. Uh, we've lost an hour on each end, it seems. We used to get about four to five hours of sun in the month of December. We're not getting anywhere near that much right now. I also noticed the other day, as we had a, a full moon, that the moon seems to be coming up in a different spot. Okay, we have these very obvious mountains that we live up against, and I kind of gauge things by that. So I got on the old internet to do a little bit of research, and it seems something has dramatically shifted very recently. Now, the earth is constantly constantly shifting, right? We, we know this, but something has changed in a big way recently. The articles that I read, I read a few different articles, it seems that Magnetic North has moved as much as 60 miles. Same thing happened on the South Pole. They're not sure why. The brains, the scientists are not sure why. One theory is that there's something pretty significant happening within the Earth's core. Um, and it also seems to have happened very rapidly, like within the last 12 months. So the end result is now I have to reconsider where we're gonna put our solar panels. It's looking like the best spot to put the solar panels is gonna be on the roof of the house and or the roof of the shop, even though neither one of them is, is facing true south. But there's something interesting going on as far as that's concerned. And in a world where we, we rely on the sun as much as we do, um, it's got me thinking to say the least. It's, it's super interesting when something like this happens. Again, I'm not, the, I'm not the smart guy in the room that's trying to figure out why this stuff is happening, but uh, it seem, seems to be abnormal, at least at the, the pace in, at which the Earth is changing its position. So anyway, some food for thought. About once a year, typically before we get into heavy snow, I get up on the roof, clean the screens, and inspect for any buildup in the chimney pipe. It typically takes just a few minutes. Over the last couple of years, I've figured out that when I do burn maple that isn't completely dry, the spark arrestor screen at the top of the chimney pipe is more prone to build up. This is why we have to get in a cycle of cutting firewood in the summertime, ensuring that the wood is as dry as it can be. Some time back, I made a trade for two side-by-sides. The 6x6 Ranger I use the most. The other Arctic Cat Prowler has been sitting, waiting for parts to show up, but it's finally fixed, and it runs great. 
Are those tires snow worthy? I'm about to go see if I can get back to the cabin. No chains? No chains. By yourself? You're so brave. Both of the machines, ironically, have pretty low hours, but the plastics are pretty worn out. After getting the Prowler back, I wanted to see if it would get up to the cabin, as it does have better tires on it than the Ranger does. Well, this little thing made it up here without any issues. Um, it's it's got a shorter wheelbase than that 6x6. It's a 650 instead of a 500. It's got a little bit more horsepower. It is a little bit, little bit beat up. It actually doesn't have that many hours on it. It just uh, spent a good portion of its life in the sun. So I need to find some new plastics for it, but I think I'm going to fix this thing up and, and make it Cedar's rig. It's quite a bit easier to drive than that Ranger is. Um, but there's so much tr uh, firewood up here. There's just so much firewood. And now that I know that I can get up here, uh, I'm gonna come up here in the morning. I'm gonna get a fire going so I can stay warm as I need to. And I'm gonna make, make a pile of firewood like, uh, like never before. So I really wanna get that cabin done. I really, really wanna get that cabin done. Call me crazy, but I've never had an interest in making payments on something that's likely to sit more than it gets used, meaning a four-wheeler or a side-by-side. -side. Both of these side-by-sides are about 15 years old. The Ranger has ended up being a huge blessing as it typically goes wherever I need it to go. It is more of a farm and ranch rig. There's not a whole lot of bells and whistles. It's sturdy, it's fairly well made, and I use it almost every day. I went into town and picked up a set of ATV tire chains. And while they weren't cheap, I figured something like this would be useful as we intend on putting a snow plow on the front of the Ranger. We have the F-250 plow truck that we use on the main road, and I had the thought that it might be easier to keep the parking area clean if I had a smaller vehicle that could do a better job in tight spots cleaning up the snow. So I'm currently in the process of finding a snow plow for the Ranger. Cedar and I have only walked onto a car lot and bought a car from a car dealership one time that I can remember.
Cheyenne, our 18-year-old, was about a year and a half old at the time. We were under pressure to get a car as we had sold the primary car we were using and we literally had a matter of hours to find Cedar a new car. As a last ditch effort, we went into downtown Mesa, walked onto a car lot and bought Cedar a Honda Accord. At that time, we only had two kids. Even back then in my mid-20s, I didn't like all the fees that I would end up paying for this car. And I knew that if I had more time, I could find just as good of a car for sale from a private owner and avoid a lot of the expenses that come from buying from a car dealer. I'm not gonna tell you the entire story about buying that car, but what I will tell you is during the process of working with that car salesman, one of the kids ended up messing their pants and in the process of me trying to identify which one of our two kids had messed their pants, I ended up with a stink on the end of my nose that has changed my life forever. That was all that I needed to happen to never step foot on a dealership's lot again. After getting the chains on the Ranger, I made it up to the cabin where there's an abundance of dry wood that I can cut up and take down to the house for firewood. I know it's just a matter of time before we have enough snow on the ground before I will not be able to get the side-by-sides back up here. And the only way I'm gonna be able to get to the cabin will be with the snow machine. I've had a bunch of trees up here at the cabin that were cut down in the past, and I finally decided today was the day to get them cut up, brought down to the house, split, and turned into firewood. Cedar and I have decided to see how far the firewood that we have goes. partly because we want to get rid of what we have sitting here, knowing that next year we'll fill the entire firewood area with maple. But we also want to see if a pile this size is enough to get us through the next four months.
I will say the downside to working with maple, especially when it's dry, dead maple, is it's hard on the chainsaws. And it doesn't smell quite as good as the deciduous trees like pine and dug fir do. But it puts off so much heat that it's well worth the struggle. After getting the chimney screen cleaned so that the smoke flows properly, we do not smell the maple burning at all. I have one more little section up there that I want to go and pick through, pile up some big logs, get them back down to the house before midweek because I can see there's a snowstorm coming in at some point later in the week, and then we'll just see how we do. For whatever reason, splitting and stacking firewood is pretty easy to do. I put the earbuds in, find a good book to listen to, and go to work. I started the afternoon by getting the chains all sharpened up beautifully on the chainsaw because I was going to go get one or two more loads of wood and be done with firewood for the winter, be done with trying to get up here with the side-by-sides for the winter. I, I, I threw everything in the back of the ranger. I got everything I could possibly need. I make the first little corner here for the first little hill and I wasn't paying attention and I got the ranger just about dumped over on its edge. You can see that okay. So, because I have cell service, I called down to the house, hollered at Rhett, told Rhett to grab the other side by side because certainly the other side by side wouldn't get stuck the way that uh, the ranger stuck. And... Okay, I'm stuck. <laughs> So they're both about to slip off and dump down the, the hill here. It's too cold. Um, it's actually a nice day, but because this never gets any sun, it's just so icy right here. So the good news is we have the camera. If nothing else, we're gonna turn this into a, a five minute segment on our YouTube channel. Um, we're gonna try to strap the front bumper on the Ranger to one of the trees, get it tight, then use the come along that we walked down and got back at the house and hiked back up here and try and drag the ranger back onto the, the trail. Then we can back it up. I'm still gonna try and give it a, a run up the hill and see what happens. But we've gotta get them to where they're not gonna tip over, where they're not gonna hurt somebody. So let me reposition the camera and then we're gonna get after it here. I don't know why I get surprised when things like this happen. It seems they always happen on a Monday and they happen when things are typically going great. I got three chains for my chainsaw sharpened up to handle the dead and seasoned maple, and I thought I would go spend a couple of more hours before the weather turns worse to pile up just a little bit more firewood. I took my eyes off the road long enough to put my earbuds in, get a book going, 
and I realized I wasn't going fast enough to get up this hill. Even with the chains, I slid off to the side and the ranger was on the verge of tipping over. Right here, we're really not that far from the house. After getting Red up here to help me, I then tried to get the prowler in front of the ranger so I could pull the ranger out. And of course, the prowler gets stuck. So we walked back down to the house, got the come along, grabbed a strap, and spent the time that I should have been cutting firewood, getting both side by sides unstuck. The good news is we got them unstuck, nobody got hurt, and tomorrow's a new day. I'll run up the hill in the morning and cut a little bit more firewood while the weather's still good. call this fireside chat we're calling this the fireside chat we Sitting got five minutes before we get roasted out five minutes before <laughs> we, we both can't uh, take it we got a fire going and, okay. and it's uh going too well um <laughs> two questions both came up quite a bit first question is what is the story on a fake tree <laughs> in our application here off grid whatever and the second question was asked very well by field, field. family of five yeah. on instagram mm -hmm. And that has to do with how do you move from Phoenix to Idaho. First question, go. Okay, fake tree. Sometimes having a real tree was not a pleasant experience for our family. We went to a tree farm and looked at one. It was super expensive. We decided to put the money into a fake tree. And also on the real tree, I have way too many ornaments. And so it always made it really droopy. And so with my fake tree, it's not droopy. <laughs> we... Uh... By not meaning pleasant, cedar means that, or we mean that um, we would go get a tree permit, go off into a uh, national forest to find that perfect tree. And what we thought would be a 45 minute trip before the kids were freezing from playing in the snow would turn into two hours because the perfect tree does not exist in nature. And, and then on top of that, cedar's not crazy about cutting down trees and neither am I. And some of those deciduous trees take years even to get to that point. Some of them require um, a forest fire to open up the seed, uh, like, like Doug first. So anyway, we spent a chunk of money on a very nice tree. It was pretty lit. I don't have to light it every year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we love the uh, real tree smell. Mm -hmm. So we bought some stuff that makes it smell like a real tree. Yeah, we cheated. Which I I really like, and if I want if I ever want to get my wife close to me, I dab a little on the old uh, <laughs> neck, and we're good to go. A little pine on your neck. Yeah. All of a sudden. <laughs> anyway, um, next question is: um, How do you move your family from a familiar, comfortable place, 800 miles northwest, to an unfamiliar, potentially uncomfortable? Place. Well, it definitely was not a decision that we took lightly. I mean, it was, we thought about it and thought about it and thought about it for a while before it happened. But as a kid, uh, my stepmom was from this area. And so as a kid, I'd come visit in the summers here. And Heath's family was from here. His dad was originally from around this area. And so as a kid, he came here. So when my stepmom got diagnosed with cancer, we came up to visit her. And both of us just fell in love ag again with this area. And we just knew, we just knew this is where we were supposed to be. And as crazy as it was, and as, as far away as it was, when we pulled into town, uh, we just 
it, we just knew it was home and we loved our neighborhood. We loved our kids made friends instantly and and we left a very nice house in Arizona and came up to a rental house, which it was not as nice. Well, it wasn't as nice, but but it was one of the, it was the only rental house big enough for our family. Yeah, and they happened to choose us. There was several other families yeah. ahead of us, and they happened to choose us, and so that was a huge blessing. There were a whole bunch of little things that fell into place after we made that tremendous effort of moving mm -hmm. eight hundred miles. Um, and that seems to be how things go in our life. <laughs> There's effort that's re required to get some of these, uh, these monumental things uh, moving. We tried to buy a number of different homes down there in Queen Creek. Mm -hmm. And it always felt like uh, the square peg in a round hole thing. <laughs> it always felt like when we would look at these big, nice houses in subdivisions, I remember thinking to myself, self, I, I, we can make this work, but this, this is not... Didn't feel right. It just it just felt like uh, there was some settling going on. We even found a house on an acre that leaned a little bit more in that direction where we could have animals and different things. And uh, we tried to buy it and it fell through. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. And that was the last time where we went, all right, we're not supposed to be here. And we, we looked, by the way, we looked all over the country. It was I, I used to travel a lot more for my business back then. And I would call Cedar from all over the country saying, hey, what about this place? Hey, what about that place? Hey, what about Kentucky? What about Oklahoma? What about North Eastern Carolina. Texas, North <laughs> Carolina? And they never felt right. And the mm -hmm. second we rolled into this little town, there were just a series of things that, that continued to remind us mm -hmm. that this is where we were supposed to be. I always knew, knew from a, a job perspective, I could find a job. Um, I've never not, with it being a tradesman, being a plumber, I've never not been able to find a job when I looked for it, I suppose. Um, my big concern was how Cedar and the kids were going to react. Uh, the day we were pulling out, the, literally as we left, we left our home and, and we drove to Cedar's parents' house to say bye to them. Cedar's uh Mom and, and... We stayed the night there. Well, that's right. We had to be out of the yeah, house. Yeah, we had to be out of our house. So we stayed the night in my mom's So house. You're, you and your mom stood in the driveway and had a meltdown. Yeah. And I thought for sure that we were done. I thought for sure you're going to jump in the truck <laughs> and say we're not going. That was one of the saddest days of my life. Because I'm pretty close with my mom and sisters. And, and, you're, and you still are. That hasn't changed. A couple states away, yeah. Your they, parents come and see us a couple times a year. Mm -hmm. But uh, the end result is Cedar jumped in her car and she was towing a trailer, which she'd never spent a whole lot of time towing a trailer. She's towing a trailer. I'm driving a humongous budget rental truck <laughs> and we just take off. And we made it to what, Las, or where, where did we get that first date? Vegas or somewhere? Uh -huh. uh, I, so, somewhere right there on the Nevada, Arizona no, border. No, we made it to uh, oh. we made it to Utah border, Utah, Idaho border. That's right. That no, day. no, that was day two. Day one, we we stopped. Remember, we stopped down there in uh, like Wickenburg or somewhere. Anyway, anyway, um, <laughs> it took us three days to get here. It took three days to go 800 miles in that truck. Um, the uh, end result is we did not know what our future held. We did not know that YouTube, that we would be doing what we're doing on YouTube. We didn't know all of those things, but what we knew is how we felt when we got here. What I knew is as I drove around the mountains and the beauty, and there was just something inside me that, that for the first time in my life was satisfied. We just knew we were home. Yeah. It just felt right. Okay. Did, did we say who asked that question? Yes. Field family, family mm -hmm. of, of five. Mm -hmm. If you're not following on, on Instagram and you have a question, follow us on Instagram. This coming Sunday's video, we'll probably talk about one of the other questions that came up uh, quite a bit was how we found our land. Mm -hmm. If you have a question you'd like to submit, again, do it, do it on Instagram. And if we see something that jumps out at us, uh, we'll do our best to address it. Thank you guys, and we hope you guys are doing really well.